Good morning, happy Sabbath, good evening from wherever you are watching us from. Thank you for joining us again for this wonderful study. We are still doing the book Ephesians, uh, just living in tough times. And today we go to lesson four, how God rescues us. But before we do anything, I'd like us to pray and also just know who is leading us, uh, know the panels, and then we can continue with our study. So I'll ask Becky to start with us for a, with a word of prayer. Eternal Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of today, for inviting us into your house of prayer and giving us an opportunity to meditate on your word. As we study, open the understanding of our heart that we may behold the wondrous works of your law. Whoever is listening to us today, Lord, may they have a deep impression of the higher calling of faith that you've given unto us all, that you may strengthen us, Father, to remain true and faithful in that which you have given unto us. Send forth your Holy Spirit to impress upon us divine truths, that through it all we may be blessed because we came to be with you. Abide with us, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, we'll start with you. Please say hi to us and tell us your name. Hello and happy Sabbath. My name is Moseti Matunura, and I'm privileged and glad to be here. Karibu sana. Uh, Happy Sabbath. My name is Brian Siabe. Welcome and let us learn together. Amen. God is good. I'm Becky Omundi. Welcome and be with us. Karibu sana. Now, God, how God rescues us. Uh, this is a very interesting lesson, I must say, before we even start. And our memory text comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 all the way to verse 5. I'm going to just read from my version, uh, King James. New King James Version, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Um, a story is told of uh, 18-month-old Jessica who was playing and fell into 22 feet into an abandoned well. Uh, as a parent, it will really scare you to just hear that your child has fallen in a well and what is more frustrating is the fact that you cannot rescue this child but for Jessica uh, at least she was she was rescued you know it was 58 hours of all this turmoil in the mother the parents and everyone else but at long last she was rescued and just that mission of rescuing her won someone Scott Shaw uh, prize winning photograph uh, he won a prize from just capturing all that moment. But there's someone else who's rescuing us. Someone who planned the rescue even before it happened. No one knew that Jessica would fall. But this person that rescued us knew that we would fall. And before the foundations of this earth were formed, before laying the foundation, he made that plan, you know. And he made sure that it came to pass. And so through this week, we are just going to look, what does it mean to be dead in sin? Because that is what Ephesians starts in verse, chapter 2, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 talks about us being dead. So what does it mean to be dead in sin? What is the nature of sinful living, you know? Then the next thing that we're going to look at through this study is how, what does it mean to be raised with Christ to new life in him. Then the last thing that you are going to look is, what does it mean to be saved by grace through faith? We are, uh, please take your Bible. Let's go through the study. Becky, we are starting with you, the Sunday part. Once dead and deceived by Satan, that is the title. And as we have read, we are told that we were once dead in our trespasses. And Paul labors to explain that to us in chapter 2 of Ephesians verse 1 all the way to verse 10. So please talk to us and even tell us about the great controversy that Paul is dealing with. He's telling us of the great deceiver, the prince, the, the prince of the air. He mentions it. Please, what does it mean to be dead in trespasses and in sin? Um, thank you very much, Sister Ramona. Mm. Um, to understand the context of chapter 2 and the use of the word. Mm. It means 
that the people you are referring to are no longer in that state. Exactly. That they have been mm. gotten out of it. Mm. And if you look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1, mm. Paul actually says that this particular epistle, he's writing to the people in Ephesus, the saints in Ephesus mm. and faithful in Christ mm. Jesus. Mm. So from that, we're able to know that he's actually singled out a particular people mm. who are different mm. from other mm. Ephesians mm. altogether. Mm. And so in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, he begin by saying, And you he made alive, mm. who are dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Mm -hmm. From our previous study, we realized that Jesus had been raised above all principalities, mm -hmm. above all power, mm -hmm. above all might, above mm -hmm. all dominion. And that is significant that Paul recognized the existence of other powers that mm -hmm. act contrary to the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And having recognized that in chapter 1, in chapter 2 is actually using that opportunity to show mm -hmm. that being dead in sin or being dead in trespasses, mm -hmm was signified by following those principalities and mm -hmm. power and he's saying that that prince of the power of the air mm. is actually in work mm. in the sons of disobedience. Mm. And I find that in, interesting that while us is telling them that power works in the sons of disobedience, con, uh, in the same breath is actually telling them that if you live in disobedience, mm -hmm. you're actually working according to that power. Mm. So he's bringing it in a very profound way that they do not feel attacked directly that they're in disobedience, but they realize that if I walk in disobedience, mm -hmm. the spirit in me mm -hmm. is not that of, of Christ God. exalted. Mm. I am not tapping into the power of the exalted mm -hmm. Christ, mm. but I am going back and walking in disobedience. Mm. Further to that, in verse 3 says, Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Mm. The significance of this text to the Ephesians at that point is to make the, who are, those who are faithful to Christ mm. to recognize that it is not of their own doing mm. that they have become faithful or they are now referred to as saints. They were once there. And the same Christ who rescued them, mm. who reached out, mm. still has capacity to reach out to others. Mm. So it's just making them alive to the reality mm. that the only difference between you who now are no longer walking in trespasses and sin mm. and the others is the Christ factor. Mm. And so now he is more of individualizing it all mm. together that each one or each of them may know what to forsake. Mm. No, verse 4 he says, But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, Five, even when you were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you, you have, have been, been saved. saved. Mm. In chapter 1, he had told them that according to the riches of his grace, which he has made to abound towards us in all wisdom and mm. prudence. Mm. Now, that grace he has been talking about mm. is what he's now referring to, that it is that grace that has caused them to be saved and raised us up together mm. and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just mm. almost referring to that moment when he says in verse 3 of Ephesians 1 that blessed with the God of our Father Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing mm. and made us to sit in heavenly places mm. with Christ. Mm. So he is bringing the same things but at this point more of addressing it from an individual point of view. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in mm. his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Verse 8, he repeats by saying, For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man mm. should boast. Mm. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm. So as you've mentioned that we also highlight the issue of the great controversy. Mm -hmm. We are seeing it working here in the context that Paul is presenting two lives. One life is directed according to Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That life has recognized the existence mm -hmm. of God's grace mm -hmm. and that life is walking in obedience. Mm. On the other hand, there is a life that is now dead in trespasses mm. that is still being guided by the principalities and the powers of darkness. Mm. That power is yet to recognize the grace of God. But the beautiful thing that Paul highlights is that 
Christ himself will do the rescue. Mm. It is not by works, lest not. any man should boast, mm. but we are God's workmanship. Amen. So the way he worked in us, mm. he's able to work in someone else yes. and save them from mm. the clutches of the great controversy mm. on the side of the Satan mm. and bring them mm. to Christ Jesus. Mm. So we who are alive today, in these tough times, mm. we follow Christ by recognizing his grace that is there for us, mm. that enables us mm. to forsake lust, to forsake mm. worldly pleasures, mm. to forsake all this ungodliness mm. and live soberly and righteously in this particular age. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I just get, I love the contrast that he's bringing out our past sinful experience before we met Christ and the blessings of salvation. He, you know, it is uh, it's just portraying to us that we are participating in the resurrection, the ascension, and the exaltation of Christ. And then I'm just um, wondering, uh, Mosetti, mm -hmm. um, Paul is here telling us, uh, like, he's giving us these two contrast lives. And, you know, someone might uh, feel like, I'm so sinful right now that even accepting the grace is just hard for them. Mm -hmm. uh, please. What hope can you give them, mm -hmm. just deriving lessons from uh, what Paul does? Uh, I believe there is um, um, a lot of hope, you know, in, um, in reading just even that epistle mm -hmm. and in reading scripture. We are told mm -hmm. that, the, th that uh, the things which were written before were written for our learning. Yeah. That we, through the comfort mm -hmm. um, and patience of the scriptures, might have hope. Mm -hmm. So I, s I will direct them, you know, if they feel that way. You know, just to see even the list of, um, like in Hebrews, Hebrews 11 gives a list of people who uh, mm. overcame, mm. you know, and if they overcame mm. and um, by the power of grace which mm. was given to them, mm. then it is possible for us to overcome. Mm. There is somebody like Rahab mm. who is called the harlot mm. there to encourage, mm. you know, and to show that it is possible. So I, I believe that uh, even Paul himself, the author of this epistle, is uh, uh, an example mm. of this grace. Mm. He himself having been a persecutor mm. and a murderer, mm. you know, and, um, you know, so as in grace transforms him. And uh, so the whole scripture is just uh, a beautiful illustration of God's power to save, you know. So that's the, that is the power of the gospel. It can transform. Mm. So um, we don't need to be defined by our past, mm. but we can, uh, we, can, we can be defined by what Christ has done and what Christ is doing and what mm. Christ will do, mm. you know, through his grace. Mm. So, yeah, there is hope in the word. Thank you. And the fact that Paul just lived, he can, he's experienced it. He's experienced the grace. And last week, Becky told us that Paul took the high road of just explaining the blessings of salvation. And as he is explaining the blessings of salvation, he's also telling them what it means to be on the other side, to be a child of disobedience. I don't know if you want to be recognized as a child of disobedience or a child of faith. Mm -hmm. um, the next uh, day, which is Monday, once deluded by our own desire, Brian, yes. uh, tempted. When, you know, in Titus chapter, um, I think I, I've forgotten the verse, but it tells us that we are tempted by our own desires. Mm. And then the, it starts from a desire, mm -hmm. it becomes a sin, and... From sin, it, it because we know the wages of sin is what is death. So mm. it is a whole step by step thing. That's why sometimes you hear uh, women saying that so if a, a man is cheating on you, it is not something that he woke up and did. He did what he already what planned. The new identity demands that we become responsible. We walk differently. Please talk to us about minding part. Once deluded by our own desires, we were once dead. Yeah. Mm. As, as you rightly said, what Becky said last week, mm. maintaining the, 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 the high road. Mm. Even this week, we are seeing Paul still maintaining the, the mm -hmm. high road. Mm. Uh, high road. Uh, in Sunday, you have talked about once dead. Mm. We are again now talking about once deluded. You know, it's like it's, it's, it, they're encouraging us mm. that you are there. Mm. You were once there, mm -hmm. but now you are here. Mm once deluded by our own desires. Mm. Since the time our parents sinned, human beings are always bent to choose mm. that which is evil. Mm. We are bent naturally mm. to do evil. You know mm. a child is born, no one teaches that child to, to start stealing things like sugar or something like that. Mm. No. We are bent towards, mm. towards that. Mm. And we are 
before we come to Christ, you know, you are led by your own desires. And, and you, to the point that you, 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 you think, you know, outside of Christ, you think that ah, that is right. That is, that, that is, that is the, the, the standard. And Paul is trying to tell them, yes, once, you, you know, before you, Christ came and, and, and saved you, before you knew Christ, you were doing this and that. You were, you know, led by your own desires. And in your own uh, per- perception, you thought that was right. You thought that you are doing the, 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 the right thing. But Paul is telling them, now that you have known Christ, we should do otherwise. I, I'd like to read that verse that we are reading, uh, Ephesians 2, uh, reading verse, verse uh, 3. Among whom also we all add our conversation in times past in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and who are by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You can see that this, they were in a situation where they were helpless, mm-hmm. that they couldn't help it. Anything that came to their mind, that is what they thought to be right. Mm. And perhaps even in this day and age, there are many out there who are, of course, led by their desires. They don't know that they're in the path of destruction. Mm-hmm. Because the, the, there's a word that Paul is now is introducing here. The children of wrath. You know? mm. That is disobedience. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's telling them that you are children of disobedience. You know, you are disobeying. But now he's telling them, you know, in this right, in the condition that they are in right now, it's distressing. But the end of it all is even more distressing. That if they don't leave uh, that, mm-hmm. being led by their own desires, mm-hmm. he's telling them that God ultimately will mm-hmm. destroy sin. Mm-hmm. That God ultimately mm-hmm. will come to address this issue. Mm-hmm. That if we don't leave, you know, following the dictates of our desires, if we don't invite Christ in our lives so that he may, he may rule over our lives, he may enthrone himself in our hearts so that he leads us, he gives us the power to overcome sin. Mm-hmm. Paul is warning us that ultimately mm-hmm. you will be children of wrath, children of disobedience, so that God will at one time destroy sin. But now he's inviting us uh, that we may, uh, through his power, be overcomers. Uh, in, in Jesus Christ. And uh, it says here, I like this word that it says, that it does not mean, uh, though, that this old self need no longer dominate the believer, who through the power of Christ can put off your old self and put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. What we need to do is put off the old self where we were being read by, led by our own desires, our own dictates, that which we saw that is, is, is the right way without God, and put on the new man. Mm. And this new man is led by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in you, controlling every aspect of your life. That way, we can be able to overcome the wrath that is coming, that God will bring over those who are disobedient, who are following over their own desires, who are allowing their own evil desires mm. to rule their lives. Mm. Uh, Thank you, Brian. Um, my question, Becky, will be, in, you know, when you read the book of Psalms, chapter 51, a very powerful prayer of repentance by David. Verse, uh, verse 3, it says, For I acknowledge my transgression. And part B, it says, And my sin is always before me. Then you move to verse 5. It says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. You know, um, Brian is telling us that when a child, you don't even teach some of these things to children. You just have to pinch them so that they can stop doing the wrong, meaning that they already know, they already know how to do the wrong things. David is saying this statement, and is it a state of hopelessness in a way that you know what i'll keep on doing this thing and yes paul is calling us to a point of you know you need to stop doing this and david is here telling us is making statements that look so hopeless how do we get out of this hopelessness because i know david was repenting but most of the times we also say the same words i was born forth in iniquity you know i am a human being those statements that we make. Um, thank you very much. Mm. We recognize that uh, he, now that you've brought it up, sometimes you say, oh, not hum- no hu- human being is perfect. Mm. Or we use it to justify mm. our wrong deeds. 
But when you look at Paul's statements and David's statement, the similarity is in the fact that when David is repenting, mm. he's actually recognizing mm. that on his own, mm. he cannot deal with the same mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Because David is a king. He has fought bears. Mm. He has fought lions. Mm. He has made many conquests. He has but when it comes to sin, he has fought Goliath. But mm. when it comes to sin, he's powerless. <laughs> and that's why he's now mm. using those statements mm. to refer to his helpless situation. Mm. And that is the situation that we are all in mm. when sin is controlling mm. us. Because unlike a disease or an illness where you can take prescription and get well. For sin, it requires an external mm. an, an external help. Mm. And now Paul is saying, you were once dead mm. in your trespasses. Mm. You were once deluded mm. in your own lusts. Mm -hmm. You were once following the works of the powers mm -hmm. of darkness. But by grace, through you faith, have you saved. have been saved. Mm -hmm. Not according to your works mm -hmm. that anyone should right. boast. Uh -huh. So if you look at David's situation, that statement makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he goes back to the point of his conception. Surely mm -hmm. what had he done? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. But still, sin was lacking at the door. Mm -hmm. And so when Paul now comes to say that it is not by your mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. but by God's grace, mm -hmm. lest anyone should should boast mm. even you and i even now these saints to whom this letter is addressed are able to recognize mm -hmm. that the idolaters around us mm. need help mm. we can pray for them mm. just as paul is praying for us from prison we can do something about these idolaters mm -hmm. about these immoral mm -hmm. immoral people mm. and commend them to mm. christ jesus who is able to rescue and save to the mm. uttermost mm. and in our personal christian experiences i don't know whether you've had situations where you have seen until you're on you're shocked by your sin mm. that you are surprised you at are how ashamed. you could do that mm. how how could i actually mm. do that mm. in spite of all that i know mm. all that i've been taught mm. and that still goes to show that we totally are dependent on christ in every step of the way mm. in the walk of faith mm. that he alone is able to give us the strength to overcome sin mm. and live a life of godliness Amen. so what paul is calling us to do to live in perfection in righteousness is actually possible yes. but if we lean on christ not yes. on our own mm. thank you so much we move to the wednesday part today sorry i'm moving ahead to the tuesday part now resurrected ascended and exalted with christ Moseti, how are we supposed to just believe that, you know, mm. I'm seated next to Christ, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in faith? How are we, how are we going, supposed to accept these gifts? Because yesterday, the, the, sorry, last week we were talking about the spiritual blessings that we have been given. But we realize that sometimes it is very hard for you to accept mm. the it's like you've been given the role of being a manager, but mm. you are not acting the role simply because you do not believe that you can be a manager. Sure. Please talk to us about resurrected uh -huh. Christ, <coughs> ascended and exalted with Christ. I think um, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it, uh, it is a beautiful thing because uh, he talks of, you know, we are moving from uh, from a scenario which is not very nice, mm. where we were deluded by our own desires, mm. where we were the children of wrath, mm. and where we were, um, we are children who are, um, you know, like um, led of uh, lusts mm. and and partakers of you know the corruption which is in the world through lust. But mm. now we are changing, and now we have become children of God. And it is interesting how it is marked by but God. Mm. <coughs> so we thank God for that uh, but. Mm. It is here. Um, uh, and it, 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 is, it is a marker of hope, mm. you know, because God does something. Mm. And uh, it is said, who is rich in mass? Mm. So we thank God because of his mercy, then um, we can be saved. And then, it's, and then um, Paul says that we have been resurrected, ascended, and exalted. Mm. And um, that's quite interesting because you will say, but I'm here, you know, <laughs> and, uh, I'm not, and I'm not dead or things like that. But, mm. but, but actually, it is something that happens, you know, by faith, it's a reality. You know um, uh, that God um, speaks, and 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 we believe that it is so. You know, and it is interesting how these things are always said. It is said together with Christ. Mm. So it is with Christ. Mm. You know, we are accepted in the Beloved. Mm. It is because of Christ. Mm. You know that we even have our salvation. So as in, it is because of what Christ did. You know, uh, because of His resurrection, we too shall be resurrected, and indeed are resurrected. You know, and that's what it says. And uh, we too shall go to heaven. And 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 in us and even right now 
we are uh, seated with Christ in heavenly places. In other mm -hmm. words, that we are, uh, there's a text which says all things are ours, you know, that um, the one who uh, gave us Christ, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. So we see that we have access to the kingdom and to all good things through Christ. And that is the beauty of the gospel. So as in, it's, um, it's of course, all these things, we believe them now because, and, um, and they are as sure as everlasting life. You know, mm -hmm. we are told that he that hath the son hath life. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we live or even though he die, yet, um, yet shall he live, you know. Mm -hmm. as in, so as in these things are a reality, uh, immediately we, we accept Christ. And, uh, and the thing is that we should continue in Christ, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and so we shall retain all these things, you know. And, and um, so it's beautiful. I was reading Isaiah. Isaiah 26, I think, it says, Christ says, together with my dead body shall they arise. Mm. That's what it says, together mm. with my dead body. In other words, everything is because of Christ. Mm. Everything is together with Christ. And so uh, I think it's a beautiful illustration of, um, of, of the glories that, that are ours and, and of, the, um, of, the high, um, in, of the great inheritance that is ours together with Christ. In other places, we are called joint heirs with Christ. Mm. So everything is because of Christ. And I think uh, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful and, and, and a glorious state, you know, co-resurrected with Christ, co-raised or co-ascended with Christ, and then seated with Christ. And um, I like... Um, um, I like what uh, the Revelator says also, because we always compare. It says that, uh, describes a group of people who follow the Lamb mm. with a soever he goeth. Mm. Of course, it is by faith, mm. you know. And eventually, it will be, it will be in reality, you know. So as in even right now, uh, w by faith, all these things are ours, you know. All these things are realities. Mm. The same way Christ was slain even from the foundations of the world, isn't it? Mm. As in all these things, so faith is a powerful thing. And through faith, we have access to all these um, beautiful realities. Mm. So that's what I would say myself. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're telling us that all these things are ours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's that part of just saying, and then there's yes. that part of believing. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, recently we've been talking about the house levy. And one thing that comes out, I, I think it's a honorable member who was just saying that... Uh, I have a house in heaven. God has given me the house there. I don't know if she was saying <laughs> just for the sake of saying or she was actually believing. Believing mm. is the, the part that mm. we do not. It's, it's really, how do you tell me that I, I have an inheritance and I'm living in, I'm always broke, you know. <laughs> mm. So I'm like, so you give me that inheritance so that I can live with it right now. You know, for me to believe that I actually have what? An inheritance. And there are so many of us just grappling with this mm. issue of accepting mm -hmm. the gifts of salvation. Mm -hmm. Becky, I'm looking at you and I'm just going to read the book of Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. You know, you are telling me I have an inheritance and I'm constantly broke. I'm here forming a WhatsApp group because I need medical um, I need four million for my son to go for a surgery. Um, I don't have school fees for next semester, for next term, for my children, or even for myself. How do I move from the fear of what will happen? Will it happen? How do I move from that fear to mm. just accepting that all is mm -hmm. mine by faith? Thank you. Um, uh, interesting that you brought the concept of by faith. Mm. And uh, without faith, it is impossible to, to please, please God. God. Because he who comes to him must mm. believe that he is and is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. So what we recognize by that is that every blessing that abounds is a reward from God mm. to us. For us to take hold of this blessing, mm. we must believe in God. Mm. We believe in God through faith. Mm. In fact, even our salvation mm. comes to us through faith. Mm. Amen. And so for the person who would want to know how do I overcome this fear, mm. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And uh, someone would ask, how do I read scripture? Mm. For me, scripture, there is, there, you, you read scripture for several reasons. But try for whatever reason. Mm. Try reading scripture for grammar. Mm. <laughs> try reading scripture for a good story. Yeah. Try reading scripture just to get an argument. Mm. By starting, 
you would somehow in the course of your study mm. find a reason to sustain mm -hmm. you might have the wrong reason for beginning mm. but while at it the spirit of god works Amen. for isaiah tells Amen. us that as sure as the rain falls from mm. heaven to earth mm. so does the word of god it does not return to him void yes so whether you read it for pleasure you read it for entertainment you read it for jesting god will still find god a finds way. a way out mm -hmm. for his work his word to work because his word is powerful than any double edged sword so if we would in faith go to our god mm -hmm. believing trusting we would be in a position to overcome the fears of life. Mm -hmm. And one would ask really, if we are saved by grace through mm -hmm. faith, um, how it's a concept of which one comes first. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a chicken and egg situation. Mm -hmm. Both grace and faith are from God. Mm -hmm. It is the grace of God that gives us the faith. Mm -hmm. It is the faith we get when we hear God. <laughs> but it is his grace people. that will cause us to go hear him. <laughs> so it's just a uh -huh. chicken and egg situation mm -hmm. of us knowing that beforehand there is grace in abundance. Mm -hmm. But before we reach it, reaching out to that grace by faith requires an act of yeah, God. Yeah, yes. thank you. So I hope even in this chicken and egg situation, <laughs> you reach to God. The most important part is, are you believing in this grace? Are you having faith? That is the most important part. Uh, Brian, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, these spiritual blessings, de uh, dead in sin, it reminds me of my baptism. So when you, before you get baptized, the pastor tells you that you are going to die with who? With Christ Amen. and resurrect. Amen. And I don't know if you had the same uh, experience but i feel like i had the same experience i was so excited you know i'm going to <laughs> my sins are going to do what die and during the first days you you are so excited about christ you're serving you're doing everything but in between things happen please talk to that person that died once and came out of the waters but right now uh they are just in a limbo Mm -hmm. Actually, that's that, that's what we are seeing in the, in the in the book of Ephesians that we are going mm -hmm. through. That Paul, you know, had visited them mm -hmm. once and now is 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 back in prison and he's trying to remind them mm -hmm. that hey, look, guys, you are doing your things mm -hmm. way before you are doing your own ways. But he's trying to remind them now. Look, you are now saved. Mm -hmm. This is the how you should behave. And as you are saying, uh, truly, many people experience that. You know, when you are baptized, you know. You, you, you go into the water thinking, you know, that some magic is going to happen. <laughs> uh, you know, once you come out of the water, but you come. The, the same you. The, the, the same you, the mm. same person. What is, then what is this? Mm. What Paul is trying to tell us here is that, you know, a life of daily trusting Jesus. Amen. Daily Amen. walking with him. And how can you walk with him? How can you learn of him? Mm. Through the word of God. Like this is his word. Yes, mm -hmm. this is the word of God. This mm -hmm. is how you're going to learn of him daily, mm -hmm. you know, feeding and feasting on the word of mm -hmm. God, meditating upon it, mm -hmm. no, not, not neglecting prayer and, and, and such like. Mm -hmm. That is how you are going to maintain that work. Mm -hmm. But if you know you are going to come and say, okay, now I'm baptized, now I'm in the church books, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to sit here. Oh, one month down the line, even a even week, you will be down, you will back, you'll be ba back, back to your to old ways, exactly. to your old self. Mm -hmm. The word of God is life. This is what will keep us, Amen. you know, Amen. In, in, uh, stable. This is what will keep us mm -hmm. standing on the solid rock, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And I like uh, those phrases that are written there. Mm -hmm. co, co resurrected, mm -hmm. co raised, mm -hmm. co seated. Mm -hmm. Are you seated in heaven right now? Heavenly places. <laughs> heavenly places. <laughs> heavenly places. <laughs> heavenly places. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my faith. By and, faith. And, and I'm reminded of Hebrews, the, 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 the giants in the mm. book of Hebrews, the giants of faith, you know, who walk with God. And the way Hebrews ends, all this did not receive their reward. Mm. But it's waiting for who? Mm. <laughs> but they, together with us, may be made perfect. Amen. Friend, mm. you, you, heaven is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Heaven is looking down upon mm -hmm. you. And you know, God has given, uh, the, the angels are there. To help us. If we cry to him, we are struggling. If, if we are falling, you know, every time, you know, you stand, you, you, you're walking and you fail. Don't give up, child of God. Mm -hmm. Just rise up, you know, go to God. He's ever willing. He's not there waiting for you to sin so that he can strike you out. No. He's looking at us with pity. The way Paul was, you know, uh, had the, the good of the Ephesians, mm -hmm. you know, the way he was addressing them, you know, not reminding, not rebuking them, not reminding them that, hey, you know, now you are, you, you, your case is hopeless. Mm -hmm. But he was giving, the way he's addressing them, he was giving them hope. 
So we should have this hope. Even we last quarter, last week's lesson, we were talking about hope. Mm. Let us have this hope that Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and by Him seated there, Him who came and died, tested this body, this human body, and He's still maintaining that body, mm. and He understands the difficulties that we go through in our day-to-day -day life. Mm. Imagine that person. So if you are facing difficulty, imagine there is one seated at the right hand of the Father who is like you and me, who has tested pain, who has tested mm -hmm. uh, disappointment, mm -hmm. discouragement, mm -hmm. and is ever ready to help us in our time of need. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. But God, that is how Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 starts. But God, when Amen. God just shows up, he shows up for us. So if you are discouraged, maybe this is your cue. This is the cue you've been waiting for. You can still raise up and still pursue God as you were doing before. We move to the Wednesday part. Now blessed forever by grace. And when we talk about grace, is the subject that is most discussed, most misunderstood, and especially from the point of view of Paul. People really misinterpret Paul when it comes to this subject of Paul. You'll find someone sinning intentionally, and what will they say? Uh, the grace of God is what? Is sufficient. And they even quote scriptures in Romans that where sin abounds, the grace is even more there. So does it mean just because mm -hmm. there is grace, we should continue abounding in sin so that we can experience this grace even more? Becky, please talk to us about now blessed forever by grace. What does it really mean? Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Romona. And um, interesting, as we're looking at now blessed forever by grace, mm. it's, it's one of those things that we grapple with. Yes. Um, as Brother Brian has mentioned, that to others... Baptism becomes the ultimate graduation of grace. Mm -hmm. That, hey, now my name is written there. Yeah. I am done. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are good to go. Mm -hmm. Whatever I do henceforth is immaterial. Mm -hmm. But um, we look to it that the baptism is just the act, the, the beginning of the journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we have the benefit of having great revelation, there's actually a church. Mm -hmm. One of the letters Christ tells them that only those who overcome will have their names retained mm -hmm. in the book. So we are, as we strive to have our names written there, mm -hmm. retaining our names in the book of life that's another thing. is another thing mm -hmm. altogether. Mm -hmm. And that's where grace comes in. Mm -hmm. When Paul um, writes in Ephesians chapter 1, verse um, 10, he speaks about uh, one thing that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Mm. So there is a foreshadow of a dispensation of the times. In the fullness of that times, all things are to be gathered in one. In who? Mm. In Christ Jesus. Mm. And so while at it, Ephesians 2 verse 7 he again says that in the ages to come, mm. he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ mm. Jesus. Mm. So this particular grace is to take us somewhere. The hymn writer of the song Amazing Grace mm. In one of the stanzas, he says, "'Tis grace mm -hmm. that brought me safe mm -hmm. thus far, mm -hmm. and grace will lead me home." Oh. So it shows the continuous working of grace in our lives, mm -hmm. not as an act of us having reached, mm -hmm. but a continuous existence. And you ask, to what end? Mm -hmm. Titus addresses himself to mm -hmm. this situation mm -hmm. in Titus chapter 2, when he talks about the grace when Paul writes to Titus, mm -hmm. he reminds him about this grace one more time. And in verse 11, he says, mm. For the grace of God bring that brings salvation mm. has appeared to all men, mm. teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in mm. this present age. Mm. So the purpose of this grace that has been freely given to us is not for us to marvel mm. at our condemned past mm -hmm. or to glory in the masses that are availed mm -hmm. to us in our present, mm -hmm. but to recognize that this grace is teaching us in a particular way to do what? To forsake every aspect of lust, mm -hmm. to deny ungodliness, mm -hmm. to live soberly, to live righteously. Now, if we recognize this, then we cannot, when called out mm. for any sinful <laughs> act or <laughs> character defect. Mm. We cannot now say, stop judging me. I'm yeah. saved by grace. No, mm. simply someone is recognizing that you are not walking according to the riches of his grace. Mm. 
whatsoever conduct you are showing does not suggest mm. that you have been with the Lord. Mm. And for the person, for the saint, you will be in a position to recognize that mm. this work, mm. my tendencies have been more inclined mm. to the principalities and powers of work, darkness as opposed, exactly, mm. as opposed to the light that exists in the word of mm. God. So the lesson writer recognizes by saying that God's plan, though, mm. does not end with a grace-filled mm. past mm. and a mercy-bathed mm. present. God's plan, rooted in divine counsels in time immemorial, stretches forever into the future. This particular grace includes all the coming ages. His plan for the eternal future is founded on the same principle mm. as his actions in the past and present. Mm. The principle of grace. So it becomes a continuous. It sought us before the foundation of the world. Mm. Justified us. Mm. Gave us an opportunity to be redeemed by the blood of Christ Jesus. That in Christ we may find forgiveness. Having been uh, received, having been given that forgiveness, mm -hmm. we resurrected with Christ mm -hmm. when he resurrected. And in his ascension, we are also participating in it. And as Brother Moseti said, we are exalted with the exalted Christ mm -hmm. and we are now sitting in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. What manner of men ought we then be? Exactly. Seeing as we have those, this grace that mm -hmm. abounds mm -hmm. towards us mm -hmm. not so much then surely it is godliness mm. that will guide every step of the way mm. because this grace is not to be taken lightly, yeah. but it's to teach us mm. to lead a godly life. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Thank you. Becky brings out this term, we are living in a new dispensation. Mm. <laughs> and I hear people using that word, and especially Christians, they think that now because we are in this grace, mm -hmm. we ought now to just relax. Mm -hmm. Please talk to such people. <laughs> well, um, I would say that um, mm. uh, Grace, as my sister has quoted scripture very rightfully and appropriately, teaches us to deny ungodliness mm. and to live righteously and soberly in this present age. Mm. Whatever age that is, as long as it is this age, you know, the Bible speaks of today, mm. you know, we are supposed to live a life which is godly. And, and, and so... Uh, that is out of question, you know, saying that uh, because it is a dispensation of grace, therefore we should be, we should be, you know, we should turn the grace of God to lasciviousness. Mm. No, I think it is wrong, you know, uh, because you are saved by grace, uh, we, we, we don't do away with the law, rather we establish it, mm. as Paul will, uh, would argue. So as in, uh, and even um, where sin abounds, grace abounds, grace abounds, you know, for you to overcome mm -hmm. <laughs> that sin. Not for you to yes, stay there. Not for you to stay <laughs> in sin. It, that, is, that is to encourage, you know, that is to encourage um, uh, the saints in the midst of sin and also the sinners who have also um, uh, maybe um, been overtaken. Mm -hmm. It's tell them that there is a abundant grace to overcome, you know, and, and so it is not, grace is not, um, grace is not to keep us in sin. It is to take us away from sin. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose of grace. Amen. So it is not an. Um, it should not abuse the grace of God. Mm. Yeah. So the grace. In fact, grace is power to overcome. If mm. you read other scriptures, you know, um, grace is, is is a beautiful thing, and uh, and so um, yeah. Now we are blessed forever by grace. Amen. Yeah. Grace is not a ticket or a leeway for you. A license to sin, actually. So if you have been the person who when corrected in brotherly love please Ramona what you're doing is wrong stop you don't start being defensive and saying you know what uh, the grace of God saved me mm. <laughs> yeah, please mm. let's let's move let's grow uh, there's something the sister yeah. uh, Ramona wanted to I read that mm. from the t testimonies she says that love is too pure to mm. cover an unconfessed sin yes mm. so as in um, you must uh, you must repent and forsake mm you know your sin and then and then then you can appropriate then you can say that you are living in grace mm. because grace will also enable you to 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 live righteous mm -hmm. mm. yeah thank you so much so these things of us i think it is just our human opinions that we come up we need to put our trust our our foundation our bedrock is the word of god so if the word of god is 
telling us that grace is actually an opportunity for us to live righteously, then you cannot afford to be staying there in sin anymore. The new dispensation means that we are to move, we are to grow in grace daily. Uh, the lesson writer tells us that we cannot graduate, you cannot get to a point where you say, by the way, now I am accomplished, I, <laughs> I am there in this work. Every day you realize that partner, there is something new. Every day you realize that you need to grow here and there. And it is just by the grace of God. Now saved by God, salvation. You know, when we start reading the book of Ephesians, um, When you start reading the uh, book of Ephesians chapter 2 all mm -hmm. the way to chapter 10, to mm -hmm. verse 10, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll just read verse 8 that is really, really significant for this study. Mm -hmm. For by grace you have been saved mm -hmm. through faith and not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, it says, not of works, lest anyone should do what should boast. Verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good work which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now saved by grace. These verses that we have read, Becky, how are they significant to our salvation? Um, thank you very much. Mm. The, 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 the use of the word now, mm. <laughs> again, becomes quite significant mm -hmm. in the fact that we are transitioning to not the past, mm -mm. not to the future, mm -hmm. but to the present. Mm. And as Brother Mosetti said, the purpose of grace is to help us live godly in the mm -hmm. present, mm -hmm. for us to recognize and worship the Lord that mm -hmm. we serve in this particular mm -hmm. space that we are in. So the grace of God that we are being told that now you have been saved, now this, it's to recognize that who is in, who has done it. It's not about the principalities mm -mm. it's not about what i did mm. it is not about my parents not about my friends the only person with the key to my salvation now we appointed is to who mm. is to god mm. and so we owe our allegiance to god mm. we owe our existence to him mm. and uh uh, interesting that now when we sing the doxology, we mm. say, praise God from whom all blessing flow. Mm -hmm. And in this particular instant, we are able to recognize that indeed the salvation of the believers, especially now to the ones in Ephesus, mm. does not occur because of their good qualities, mm -hmm. does not occur because they are distinguished among the idolaters of the city. Mm -hmm. You know, like you are like they are the oasis of godliness mm. in the entire Ephesus, <laughs> it's not for them now to mm. think that they did it to join mm -hmm. that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. It is God. It is God who has now saved mm -hmm. them. Not their good behavior, not their fine qualities, not anything that they have done. Why? Because Paul has already reminded them that you guys were actually spiritually dead. Mm. We were all in this mm. boat of mm. being spiritually dead. Mm. But God, by grace... Mm has saved you. There is a personal initiative by God mm. to get them and snatch them out of Satan. Mm. And, and that happens to us all. I don't know, you've had people sharing their testimonies of salvation. Mm. Someone might tell you, I was just in the midst of somewhere mm. and I had the still smoke. I had mm. something telling me mm. and they made a decision. That shows us in fact, the irony is in a congregation of a hundred mm. a someone can be preached but only one gets saved. Mm. Yeah? Mm. That shows us the inner working of the Spirit of God that all of us had the message, mm. but only one mm. was saved by that message. Meaning that someone was particularly for that person. Exactly. Mm. That, that person had the voice mm. of God, listened and responded mm. to it. Mm. And the call for us in many of our lives today mm. is to respond to that call. Amen. And I think that's Amen. why most preachers would say that forsaking all others... Mm. Ask yourself, what would happen to you mm. if Christ were to come today? Mm. Would you be numbered amongst mm. they that go with him to mm. heaven? And that recognition would help you know mm. Mm. whether you are responding to this grace mm. or not. Mm. We are on a re Christ is rescuing us. Mm. We are only rescued because we are in need of rescuing. Mm. So the person who recognizes their need for rescuing mm. appreciates the grace of Amen. God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 
Brian, I'll, I'll just ask, why is it important for us to understand that our salvation is from God and not rooted in our own efforts? Because Paul says that we are not saved by works, lest we should boast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul understood the, the danger that was there. Mm. He understood the danger of uh, the Ephesians reaching a point where they are trusting in their own efforts. Mm. Like they, are, they, they think that there is something they could do, to, mm. th they did, mm. for God to, to, to save to them. Save you them. Know? Mm. And we are in the same danger also. That yes. You'd reach a point where, you know, I, I, because I serve well in church, because <laughs> I've been an elder this long, <laughs> Uh, because, because I I'm, sing so I'm in well, the lesson panel. I'm in the lesson panel here. <laughs> now, I'm commending myself to God mm. using that. That is a very dangerous thing. Mm. That's and, and and the devil knows that very well. Mm. That you know, it would make us you know be comfortable and uh, start ascribing our you know our our good standing before God because of our service in church, mm. because of uh, going for mission, mm. you go for mission for all month and you come out of this. And, and I think now my standing in uh, in God with God I've, is... I've increased is, spiritual <laughs> bonga <laughs> points. Yes. No, it's, it's not that. Mm -hmm. And Paul understood that very clearly. And that's why he wanted it, them to understand, hey, you have, it's, there's nothing you did, there's nothing you contributed for to make God come and save you. Mm. There's nothing we can contribute. There's nothing we can do to make God, you know, to commend ourselves to God that he may, he may save us. It's by grace. And we'll take eternity to understand, mm. to understand that. What it took God, what is this thing of grace? How could he come from heaven? He was sinless mm. and come and die for us. Mm -hmm. So that is a, 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 a living danger that we should always be on the guard mm. that there is nothing in and of ourselves that we can do to commend ourselves to God. And uh, there is a statement down there that says, uh, standing in the grace of God, we believers are exhibits of His grace, mm. and only of His grace we are His masterpieces, mm. created by God in Christ Jesus. I like the word Paul used there: workmanship. Mm. We are God's workmanship. So, child of God, don't ever think that there is something you can you know you can do you know serve God or give so much to recommend yourself to God. Mm. It is God's grace and grace alone. That has saved you and me. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, Brother Moseti, just to wrap up this discussion, I'll, I'll ask, why do you think Paul frequently calls sinful parts of his audience, inviting them to, re to reflect on their pre-conversion lives? He keeps, mm. he goes back to mm. the, he's taken the high road that we agree, but he does not cease to remind them of mm -hmm. their past. Mm -hmm. You were once dead in your sins, mm -hmm. working as children of this world. What is the significance of him doing that? Um, I, I, it will help you, you know, it's like count your blessings, name them one by one, mm. and it will surprise you what the Lord has, has done. done. Mm -hmm. So as in, to see the hole from whence you are dug, mm. you know, you are taken, and to see the heights um, to which now you are uh, planted or uh, set on is something that sh will lead you to uh, be thankful. Mm. You know? So I, I think it is to highlight the work of God mm. and the marvelous grace of God. And uh, it's something that we, we, we also should do, you know, take stock of what God has done. Mm. I remember there is a text in, the, in Numbers which says, um, um, what hath God wrought? Mm. What hath God wrought? Mm. And then an exclamation mark. As in, God has done something marvelous, you know. So, yeah, uh, there's even a sermon by a good preacher called What, mm. you know, where he reflects on the things that God has done for him. So I think it's, it's important. And even that good preacher remembers the things he used to do mm. in the past. Mm. So I think it is important so that you can understand what, um, what God has done. Mm. And you can be grateful. And you can know um, and you can appreciate, you know, the saving power of God. Mm. And, and that are, that serves to the uttermost. Amen. Amen. So you are. I, I, I just like to. I, I like what he said. Mm. Just by appreciating, you know, mm. sit down and look the depths from which mm. you Lord, have been brought, yeah. and and where you are now, mm. and try to see along the way whether you did anything mm. <laughs> for you to, you know, appreciating <laughs> the, the, the the depth from which Christ has raised you from. I think that will make you understand that it, I've done nothing. Mm. I've done nothing to deserve this, and ascribe. Everything to Christ's uh, grace, to God's grace. Should be. 
Uh, so we are coming to the end of this study, but before we just like wrap up, finally, finally, uh, I'll ask my panelists to just give like one statement and from this lesson, what stood out for you? How God rescues us just uh, in, in two or three sentences, just briefly, starting with you, Becky. Uh, for me, uh, the recognition that mm. every, even a good person needs to be saved <laughs> was really key mm -hmm. for me. That the God did not, we, if, even if however good you are, the sin problem still lacks and you have to deal with it. And the only way is to get saved. Mm. You have to recognize that you need Christ, mm. someone external out. Regardless of that you've brought, been brought up in a an insulated, pure, Christian family mm. away from evil. Mm. You know, you have to be saved. Still. Being good is not enough. Amen. Yes. Being good is not enough. Thank you. Yes, then. When I look at myself, mm. outside of Christ, I don't see I can be saved. Mm. But when I behold Christ Amen. seated at the right hand of the Father, mm. I don't see how I can be lost. Amen. So by faith, Amen. It's beholding that Christ is seated at the right hand mm -hmm. of the Father. Amen. Is there interceding for me? Mm -hmm. Is there cheering for me that I may make it? Amen. Thank you. Brother Mosetti? I like, uh, I'm always fascinated by that, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. There is even a devotional by that mm -hmm. name in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite interesting. But I think that... Um, you know, even we are told that we should set our minds on things above, mm -hmm. that our citizenry is not, mm -hmm. um, is not here. And we are told that we are pilgrims. So I think it's good if we always look up and we imagine ourselves in heaven. Somebody said, if you don't imagine yourself in heaven, maybe it's because you're not going there, you see. <laughs> so I think it's, it's important to, wow. uh, to have that mentality, you know, um, yeah, to see ourselves there, even... Mm -hmm. And, 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 and to set our minds on those things. That's what mm. we are told mm. all the time. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Thank you. If you're not seeing yourself in heaven, maybe you're not going there. I don't know where you're seeing yourself. Mm. But for me, there's some, several things that stuck, stood out and I just took, took time to note them down. Is You know, when the, in this lesson, Paul starts by explaining to us how we were once dead. But he gives us hope that if we stop walking as sons of disobedience, then there is hope for us. Another thing is that we have a new identity in Christ. We were made alive from our trespasses. So it demands that we cannot live the same way we were. We have to live newly as children called by God. Another thing is that in faith, we claim all these gifts of salvation by faith. We should just claim them. They are there for us. You know, if you've been given a blank check, use it wisely. We have been saved by grace and that means that we need to behold the faith of Christ so that we do not make statements. I'll just repeat this because I hear it so many times that, uh, you know, I'm saved by grace. Uh, the grace of God is sufficient. Yet you are sinning intentionally. Yet you've been corrected and you don't just want to listen. We are purely dependent on God. You know, young people keep saying, me God. So this is where this statement, uh, uh, what, what is the word, applies. Mm. This is where the, that statement here, ni God, mm. applies. Our salvation, ni God. Everything for us is God, purely. We play no role. Ours is just to do what? To accept. It started with Abraham. Abraham just accepting salvation. You know, God is making a covenant, but Abraham really is just there to accept it, you know. And it is the theme that runs through the Bible. God always seeking us as our role is just to do what? To accept by faith. I pray that we accept that salvation is ours by faith and we are just uh, unique children of God and let us live according to what God has called us. I'll ask that, Brother Brian, you close for us with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you so much uh, for this uh, discussion that we've just had. We thank you, Lord Father, that you gave your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to come and save us from our wretchedness. Perhaps, Lord Father, at times we forget that it took your Son to save us. It took the death of your Son to save us. And we start ascribing our salvation to our own efforts, Lord Father. When we've done that, Lord, we ask for your mercies and forgiveness. We want to pray, Lord Father, that in this journey of faith and grace, Lord, you may hold us firmly. 
you may hold our hands that we may never set our gaze away from Calvary. That at Calvary, Lord Father, we may see what it took you to save us. And that forever, Lord, we may appreciate that. And Lord, we may give ourselves to you to be used of you, to be led of you, to the honor and glory of your name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.